¿Y acá dónde? Well, as the title says, how is the experience of Hell Divers 2? I don't know. I am split, but before I untangle the yarn of my mixed feelings related to this game and why do I have them, I should probably address what is Helldivers 2. The intro cinematic sets up the atmosphere, which looks like a military recruitment propaganda, encouraging you to take the agency into your own hands by becoming a member of the elite Earth Defense Forces, also known by uh, becoming a Helldiver. You can liberate the galaxy and spread democracy to the invading forces, uh, more on them later. Well, in short, this is a simulation of a galactic war that you will be taking part in and contributing to. The planets and missions will vary day to day depending on what you and your fellow players liberated and defended. You are just a foot soldier joining the front lines to aid the war effort with uh, up to three other people, whether they be on Xbox, PlayStation or PC. Obviously, this is a fun premise where you, together with the game's community, are impacting the galaxy. The launch of any live service game is almost never a tremendous success, but is almost always a failure on multiple fronts. The launch was uh, not handled in the best way. I had and have to mention this because I'm one of the people who waited in queues to play, together with many others. While I did say queues, there were no queues. Basically, if the server had space, whoever pinged it first got in first. Which means this varied from 2 minutes wait time to 4 hours wait time. This got fixed by the server capacity getting bigger, so this is no longer an issue. Uh, let's get something out of the way immediately. I don't want to talk about it later. Live service games, more often than not, leave a lot of people with a salty aftertaste in their mouth. This is evident especially so within MMO communities and just, well, by asking any Destiny 2 player about uh, how much money they spent on the game. Hell Divers 2 doesn't seem predatory so far. In fact, monetization wise, this game feels like a cup of fresh air. The packs are priced fairly, and if you still want cosmetics but you do not want to pay, you can earn them in-game by playing and looting the premium currency. So let's talk gameplay, presentation and other stuff. Whether you're fighting the Terminators or 40k bug swarms, you will primarily be doing that in a third person perspective, letting you see past corners and helping you be more aware of the general situation. You are going to need every advantage that you can get. Why is that? You might ask. Isn't this just a casual game? No, 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 no. You see, this is a simulation. You get your leg injured, you will move slower. You take a bug's head off only for it to stay alive and frantically try to find you and hit you. Your knowledge and precision will be rewarded the higher you climb on the difficulty ladder. Difficulty 4 and onwards will start introducing enemies with heavy armor. In total there is 9 difficulties, ranging from a toddler with a chase greater can likely finish this, though even a seasoned veteran might find himself in a pickle if not careful. They don't necessarily spawn more enemies, but enemies with better armor, whether from metal or cheating. Just dealing with these enemies can and will sometimes kill you on top of the regular swarms of bugs or platoons of autobots. Let's name the most obvious examples when it comes to armor. Bugs have a certain unit, a charger, which, as its name implies, is there to charge any threat to the hive until it's either trampled or outmaneuvered, making avoiding it or killing it a priority if you do not want to get trampled. Bots have a hulk. No, not that hulk, but an armored unit that is going to either blow you up shoot you up or fire you up, depending on its current loadout of course. These are just the two most obvious examples that are using heavy armor, and I'm using them to highlight the variety of enemies in the game. Even then, enemies can vary 
from planet to planet and uh, how deep you have pushed into the enemy territory. Enemies are varied enough so that you can't just bulldoze your way through them or you will die. What shines the most aside from enemy designs is the combat. Every shot that hits an unarmored part will look like it does physical damage. You will dismember your enemy or outright kill it. If the enemy is armored, you will need something to penetrate his armor. And that something is usually a stratagem. From napalms to gas to electromagnetic pulses to just plain old air strikes and orbital lasers, you will have to select what lets you do the most bang for your buck on your missions, depending on your playstyle, of course. So, are you struggling against heavily armored targets? So, call in an expendable anti-tank launcher and uh, use it. Dispose of them. Are you struggling against a lot of weaker enemies? Turn them into mist with cluster bombs. Need to defend the point? Get one of a few sentries with you will gun down any opposition to your current liberating effort. These choices will put uh, much more pressure on your loadout and what you're bringing to the mission. On top of all that, explosions will destroy structures and terraform the ground you ordered a bombing on. This shows attention to detail. The grass will be replaced by scorched ground. The wall that was protecting you from enemies will and can be blown up by both you and your enemies. So, remember 10 seconds ago when I said there is pressure on your loadout? That pressure is mainly applied through difficulties, letting you face tougher enemies. Why would you want to go to higher difficulties in the first place? For liberty. Nah, jokes aside, upon completing each mission, you will get credits and experience. Depending on difficulty, this will get a percentage increase, ranging from 0% to 250% and then other rewards that you have to extract to get medals, samples and super credits. I am not sure on super credits or medals but hey, let's explain the rewards. Generally credits, experience and samples interact with your stratagems. Money and XP are being used to unlock and purchase them and samples will just make them better. Whether that is a reduced cooldown, more shots per salvo, or even more uses. Super credits are the premium currency which I talked about earlier. You can find them on points of interest together with another currency, medals. Medals you can get by completing missions. You cannot swipe for medals and they are used in the battle pass. Ah wait, battle pass? I meant more of a progression pass. Whether you complete it or not, it will stay there when the next one comes out. So, you can unlock more options in the forms of armors, helmets and capes for that drip. Armors being one of the most impactful stuff you can get in their passive bonuses. And weapons, from primary to secondary, to types of grenades and passive bonuses for missions in the form of unlimited usage boosters that will benefit the whole squad, as well as, well, more premium currency. Right, so the higher difficulties will give you more medals upon completing the mission. They will also spawn a bigger quantity and higher quality of samples because they come in three rarities, as well by putting more points of interest on the map, letting you farm more medals and more premium currency if you need it. The wards are there to guide you into giving higher difficulty runs a try. There is always that small little voice in your head, but what if I can complete this mission on the next one? And you can almost feel the game nudging you into sheer mayhem and destruction that attempting those difficulties for the first time will bring. Right, so the game does show attention to detail, mainly in the approach that this is built like a simulation. Bullets will ricochet enemies will call for reinforcement provided you give them enough time. To top it all off, there is also one more mechanic that uh, people mostly ignore, including myself. Stealth. There are no indicators for it and I am not sure how it works but it is there and it can drastically shorten your mission time. Yes, yes, gameplay with all its complexities and with so much to progress will potentially 
enable you to play the game much longer than you wanted, together with other stuff that adds depths to these systems, uh, which I'm not going to mention or talk about, because uh, you can figure them out on your own. Uh, now let's talk about what won't make you play the game longer. This is going to sound negative now, because it is a negative part of this experience, and I'm trying to make a point. The fucking bugs. No, I mean the technical ones. See, some areas of the game are lighted so brightly, they will burn your cornea off on an HDR monitor. There is also a bug to respawn with a primary weapon in your hand, yet as soon as you try to use it, nothing happens and it just disappears, leaving you without your primary weapon to defend yourself with, which you can fix by picking another weapon or by dying. Uh, notice how I said dying to fix it? Well, how about a bug that won't let you respawn, letting you spectate your squad mate getting gangbanged alone while you watch and provide emotional support? The bugs do ruin the experience, but I am generally tolerant on them, because I can just restart the mission or the game. I don't particularly care that much. However, bugs, together with toxic, fucking, people is something that can potentially ruin the experience. Let me explain. So everything in this game, samples, super credits, experience, medals, is shared. So if someone finds four medals, you won't get one medal each, you will all get four medals. Even with that, you have idiots that will kick you out of the mission before you all extract, no matter how good or bad you are performing. This doesn't usually happen on lower difficulties, but once you go higher, you might find these lobotomized specimens will be there to ruin your experience for no other reason than that their lizard brain takes pleasure in wasting other people's time. So basically to fix this, you should probably host the lobbies yourself or play with friends if you have them. Both will work out. What about the bugs that can also crash your game, effectively halting your mission progress? Yeah, what about armor not working either, or at all? What about only one weapon being the best for dealing with almost all kinds of enemies? Well, the developers did address and said they are working on fixing it. Worth saying is, the community is not all bad. In fact, I met some of the most positive and funny people in this game's community. It's just bad apples standing out that are making the whole batch look spoiled. Worth mentioning is that the community actually tries to compete with the admins, because admins are controlling the both enemy factions on what's getting invaded and stuff like that. So the community is trying to coordinate the effort. Coordination is currently being focused on the western front because of this. This is a major order and uh, they are trying to complete. So you can find the links to the coordinating servers in my description if you are interested in that. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much why I had mixed feelings on the game, unlike a certain other game that gives me only one feeling, which just happens to be anger. Like Helldivers 2 can be an amazing co-op experience, but it is currently being held back by bugs. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.